Hi ladies and gents, Lord of Ponto here with another video for Rise of Empires Ice and Fire. Today it's a heroes, uh, season hero guide and we're going to be looking at the last of the SX2 heroes. Uh, that is going to be Mr. Army Breaker here. So Army Breaker is the second of the two SX2 cavalry heroes and you can see that he is a support hero. You'll really want to put him either on your front or middle rows but he's perfectly good in either. So let's have a look at his skills. Of course, skill one is the usual dictator skill, giving the extra 23,100 marching capacity from the troops. His first hero specific skill, skill two, formation rest. It's a combat skill, effective range is three, and it's gonna target two random friendly squads because it is a recovery skill. So you have a 55% chance to recover some troops for two random friendly squads within range. 84% recovery rate, which is quite high. One of the higher rates and remove debuffs so that is going to obviously recover some troops and if you're recovering uh, removing debuffs that's going to help uh you know whether it's a uh, confusion debuff or disarm or silence or suppression uh, because then your your troops and your heroes will be able to then uh, remain in combat and do damage so this is two really nice elements 55 percent chance you're probably looking at this activating four to six times in a battle, I guess. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty good activation rate as well. Skill three, of course, is the usual extra 50% resistance from the defensive formation skill. And skill four is offensive formation, so giving the extra 50% might to the troops in your squad. Skill five, formation tra tranquility. Another combat skill, and the effective range is four, so this is why you'll uh, be able to put him in your front or middle rows for his skill to be fully effective. This one is going to target two random enemy squads with an effective range, uh, and there's two elements of debuff to your opponent here, so there's a 40% chance to silence two random enemy squads within range, and deal minus, and they'll deal minus 20% less damage for two turns. So. Really nice double effect here. You're silencing the heroes so they can't get their skills off and uh, less, and then 20% less damage being dealt by the troops as well um, at the same time. So not quite as good as a full suppression uh, skill, counter skill, but this is very good. And two turns, you know, 40% chance. Probably going to get off two to three times a battle, maybe four times if you're very lucky. Uh, and bearing in mind it's for two turns, uh, you only really need this to get off for three three times in a battle for it to be highly, you know, have a highly significant impact. And um, so that's very, very nice debuff skill for his fifth skill. Skill six, the awakened skill, as usual, you're getting the extra 250% bonus to leadership skills. And you're then getting the 20% extra resistance. So that is a good, uh, you know, bulldog skill, as I like to call it. Um, a lot of people call it tanky. Uh, so extra, you know, all that extra resistance means that he is going to be good on the front row. Um, and then you've got the, and the other reason he's good on the front row is you're getting 20% cavalry speed. Um, now, if you think back to here, this skill removes debuffs, right? So if you're, if he's giving you that extra cavalry speed so that you will hopefully be uh, going first each turn, then, um, Say if someone has put a silence skill on you, say if you're up against Roku and Roku has put his silence skill on all of your, all three of your um, squads, then at least by going first, and if this activates, that will immediately remove that, that silencing effect so that it wouldn't have, it won't have any impact on two of your squads. Um, so that's kind of a good, that's a good element to him. Skill seven is Discipline Cavalry, so it's going to give you extra 40% might to all of the units in the formation. Uh, so again, extra oomph, and uh, and that's okay again because you're getting like the extra resistance and speed from his sixth skill. And then finally, skill eight, Formation Enigma. Combat skill again, effective ranges two. This targets all three random enemy squads, uh, sorry, friendly squads, friendly squads. So uh, really, really good buff and the only downside is that it's double kind of chance element to it here. 30% chance to make all friendly squads have a 60% chance of entering evasion status when taking the next three damages. So evade is um, when you'll see the dodge 
icon on the uh, and so like um, heroes like warlord have that in the first couple of turns of the battle um except his skill is like 70 percent um so that's not great it's i would expect that this is going to probably get off one or two times in a battle mats uh you'll see that in the in the video we're about to watch uh that it only activated once and in my in my experience generally it does only activate once or twice max in a battle and then you've only got the 60% chance um, of the evasion status, and so not all your squads are going to end or going to be dodging the damages either. Um, and then, but then you've got a second element to it, which is increases 47% might and resistance for two turns. So that's a, that could be a really nice boost um, if you're you know hanging on in a battle and you need that extra resistance, or if you're um, you know. For instance, if this is combining with uh, Ragnar's eighth skill, and you're giving extra might and damage in the fifth turn, uh, then Avalanche—if you've got them with Avalanche—then an Avalanche gets off like a hack and slash. Then that is going to do enormous damage. You're probably talking about like thirty-three, thirty-four thousand troops potentially um, from the hack and slash attack. So, if all of this cl clicks right, it will do. It, it's awesome and army breaker is a real top hero because he's got he's a very well-rounded hero he is um he's healing for you he's debuffing the enemy for you and he's um and he's obviously uh, removing their debuffs from you he's giving you the extra cavalry speed uh, and he has then got this added element at the end which is going to try and hopefully protect your troops and give you a buff as well so he's got a lot going on in those three skills he's a really really well-rounded support hero um maybe even the best support hero in the game he's certainly the best cavalry support hero um at the moment i would say um because and again like when you combine that with the current meta formation of um army breaker ragnar and avalanche if they all click at the right time they can can be absolutely devastating. I would suggest maybe Lawman long term is going to be slightly, might be slightly better for a front row hero. But Army Breaker is flexible as well. You know, you can put him on the front or or, or middle row. So let's get into a battle and see him in action. Uh, we'll just do one of my hero duel videos from this weekend. Uh, so I was up against Oleg, one of the players in my alliance. Uh, he did actually beat me. He's got some nice legions. His Footman Legion is particularly strong as well. Um, so this is my Class Legion with Army Breaker maxed, Avalanche maxed, and then my Ragnar where I've only got six of his skills maxed at the moment. Uh, you can see though, my Avalanche, 10 skills used over 200,000 kills. Avalanche was absolutely devastating in this battle. Um, Army Breaker got six skills off. Um, I think if I remember correctly, it's six lots of formation rest. So... Um, probably towards the higher end of of, of the recovery, uh, and then there was a couple of uh, tranquilities that activated, and then just the one enigma, as I said. Uh, but you know, if your tranquility is only activating a couple of times, that's still silencing two thirds of your opponent for half the battle. So let's get into the video and have a watch. So pre-battle, you've just got avalanches, um, avalanches. Status skill activating, Ragnar status skill activating, Immortal Guardians prep and status skills activating. And you can see that my my troops are going first against these archers because I've got my higher combat speed. Not the strongest archer squad, I have to say, because obviously um, he's still rocking with Sauro. But Immortal Guardian and Jade Eagle are really good. And you're going to see actually that... Uh, oh, here we go. So here's a formation rest. So 2,884 troops, that's what that recovery is going to get you. Um, and But annoyingly for me, I think it obviously doesn't target... It targeted that middle row randomly, which meant that it didn't actually help any troops because that troops that line was full, uh, while my back row actually did need healing. So that is kind of annoying. Um, I think if they're going to bring out uh, a hero which um, heals the two lowest troop counts in your squad then that is going to become a very very useful skill but obviously we don't have that yet i'm sure in the future we'll get these we'll get heroes which have got smarter skills 
there we go uh, formation tranquility and formation rest activating so nearly well over 5600 troops healed and then there we go you're going to see silencing from that tranquility skill Huge damage from Avalanche there. Ragnar gets off his Raging Fury skill on the fourth turn. And what you've got to remember, there we go, so silenced again. So unfortunately the other hero that must have been, the other row that must have been, oh, and Formation Rest being activated. So another 5,600, 5,700 heroes. And this is what you're going to see. This is why I got so many kills because uh, that was 33,000 kills between those two elements. Um, because you have Ragnar's ape skill giving extra damage on turn five. And the last time, so, oh, and so we'll get another formation rest, but again, it targets that middle row when I really wanted it to target the back row. Huge damage from Avalanche again. Jade Eagle actually finishes off my back row because I don't have Ragnar Awaken. So again, you know, not having any of your S heroes awakened or not, or any of your S heroes, even on the back row, if they're not awakened, it's an issue. Now, all three skills have activated now. So we've just had uh, the recovery. Look at that huge damage from Avalanche because he's getting the extra 47% might. And then we're also from the tranquility getting the silencing effect on the middle and back rows this time. So more recovery from the troops. You can actually see that my middle row is at max. And we've depleted the back row and the middle row is silenced again because of the, the tranquility. So uh, there we go. That's a pretty nice battle to, to watch. Um, so we, uh, as I said, we had six um, formation rests and my only criticism about this is, you know, you could see in, the, in that battle there my middle row finished with basically the whole troops because it got six lots of um, formation rest um, while my back row really could have done with uh, that healing um, and my back you know if, it, if my back row had had the same amount of healing as my middle row it still would have been there at the end of the battle um, tranquility so when it first got off you would have seen that it silenced jade eagle for two turns and also um, it would have it would have been silencing a mortal guardian, but a mortal guardian has um, you know status and prep skills um, that weren't really affected by which aren't affected by that. Um, and then the second time you would have seen that uh, it silenced Jade Eagle on that middle row again and Zoro on the back row, so they weren't doing any damage against me, um, which was really nice. So if we have a look see jade eagle only got three skills off and it's because he was silenced for half the battle from the tranquility steel so that is the kind of importance uh that that skill from army breaker can place um zoro had a reasonable amount he only got silenced at the end eight skills but still the, their kill levels are low and that is and that is definitely you know it's down to um it's down to army breaker at the at the end of the day and then of course his we saw on turn seven that that formation enigma um, activated and you saw the extra damage being done by Avalanche's, I think it was probably the cleave skill to the two uh, formations there on the opponent as well. Um, so all those kind of elements um, combined for Avalanche to get that huge kill total for us and Army Breaker, as I say, is of course helping all the time there. So let's just quickly go back into Army's main page. So in terms of uh, skills, when are you going to want to unlock what? Well, if you're thinking of putting them on the front row, then you'll definitely have to unlock skill six first, then skill eight, then skill seven. Um, if you're going to put him on 
Uh, do, you, do you know what? Actually, I would say you want to unlock skill six anyway because he's got that extra cavalry speed, which then helps with his skill two. Um, so I really would, for me, I would unlock um, his sixth skill first, and that's what I have been doing in my accounts. Um, some people might go eighth. They might disagree with me if um, if they're going to put Army Breaker on their middle row, but I would say sixth. Um, who's he going to work with? Well, you've got to remember that he's a full support hero, so ideally you want to put him with two other heroes who have got combat um, damage skills. So, uh, And, of course, he can go front or middle row. So uh, I, you can work with um, a Windwalker, Army Breaker, a Mortal combo, Windwalker, Army Breaker, Ava, Avalanche. Uh, you can go... Um, uh, you can go Lawman as your front row hero and then have our... Because Lawman does have some offensive skills as well. Uh, so you can go Lawman... Army Immortal or Lawman Army um, Avalanche. That is a very, very good, it's probably the best defensive cavalry combination at the moment because you get so much buffing and support from both Lawman and Army Breaker. Uh, and then currently, as you've probably seen in that video, like the, the meta combination right now is actually Army Ragnar Avalanche. Uh, when all those skills sync together, they can be devastating. Um, so those are the combinations for, for him at the moment. In terms of longevity, even he's probably not going to be in the top formation, maybe in, in two or three months' time. Uh, but equally, if you're running with two Cavalry Legions, I can't. I think it's going to be a very long time, maybe even a year, before you'd start thinking about uh, replacing Army Breaker with, with another SX hero. He's that good. So... Um, he might not always be in those... Yeah, he's in the Meta Cav Legion right now. Um, he might not be for, for two seasons' time. But um, he's he's really that good. So if you get Army Breaker, that's why SX2 banner is so important for everyone. Uh, you're getting Avalanche and Army Breaker in the same banner. Two top, top level cavalry heroes. That's why you've got to go for those that banner. So there we go. Um, that's everything for this video guys if you've liked the video then please do click on the like below that would be absolutely fantastic and if you haven't already please click on that subscribe and ring the bell so you can get notifications when I'm, whenever I'm dropping videos on the channel which I do da daily and um, if you could please share my channel in your Alliance Chat Province Chat and through Lime, WhatsApp, Fiber, Discord whatever you use to communicate with your fellow players in the game that would be absolutely brilliant thank you so much for watching guys that's it for now I'll see you soon